All right, thank you. Nearly one on, thank you, thank you. Peace. Peace, nearly one on. Peace, thank you so much, thank you. Security, please help us to clear the view. Security, please help us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Peace, thank you. Peace. 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 Rasma, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, security, coordinate yourself. Too much. Please. I think uh, the spokesman for the traditional uh, uh, authorities mentioned one of them and that you have all the tertiary institutions in this country. You have UPUSA, you have my former university, Legon, and Accra Technical University and all the others. But there's no secondary school in the constituency, unfortunately. Yes. And so, like I said, when we come, we'll build a community-based school yes. in this country. Yes. So that the young people who finish from basic education don't have to travel out and then come back again for tertiary education. You'll be able to attend your own secondary school here and then from there continue. This government has given up. We have no solutions to the issue of flooding in Accra. As for now, the least rainfall leads to flooding, even in areas that didn't used to flood before. There are many places where we never experienced floods. Today, when it rains, those areas get flooded. And so, I've said that we need an engineering solution to this problem, apart from a human solution, which is to stop, avoid littering and throwing things into the drains and so forth. We also need an engineering solution. And so NDC is going to commission the best hydro engineers to find out how we can alleviate the flooding problem in Accra. The problem with flooding, for those of you who study geography or hydrology, is if you look at Accra, to the north you have the Ipapim range of mountains and a lot of streams come from that range when it rains in the Ipapim rain. That's why sometimes in Accra it doesn't rain, but yet you see that water is coming. It's coming from the eastern region from Ipapim and uh, some of the rivers there. And those, that water is flowing towards the sea through the Sakumo stream, the Odor stream, and all the other streams that you see going to the sea. Now we've come to build a city between the mountain and the sea. Yes. And so when the water is coming, it encounters the city. Yes. 
And we can't let, we will not let the drains open. People are building on those drains and impeding the flow of the water. And once we impede the flow of water, it will back up and it will flood. And so we need to find an engineering solution to this problem, otherwise it will continue forever and ever. And so NBC will come and look at that and resolve this issue. And then finally, we all want to rescue our country from the clutches of this rapacious MVP administration. And before we can do that, we must win an election. We all know what happens during the elections, especially in this circumstance. There are times when I believe you could have won the election, but because you let your guard down, you lost it. It is not going to happen again. All we are asking from you is vigilance. We shall send you the resources. We're going to launch the campaign soon. And once we launch the campaign, there is no rest for any of you. We're going to go from house to house continuously, from now till December 7th, to all the markets, to all the shopping centers. We're going to go and we're going to campaign so that John Dumelo gets elected as a member of parliament. And so we will send you the resources to prosecute that campaign. As soon as the campaign is launched, we are going to send you what you need, including money. So I don't want any excuse that we have money to fuel our vehicle or we have money to do this. We are in opposition, we don't have money, but the little we have will share amongst all the constituencies so that you can campaign. Send the message to every corner. You have the defense, you have all that it takes to be able to do the campaign. And you must go and give up the defense and give the NDC message out. But aside from the campaign, you can campaign as best as you want. You can have the best message, you can have the best candidates. On the D day, if you are not vigilant, you will lose the election. You have a good candidate, we're going to send you the resources, your message is good. All that we require from you now is vigilance. And so please, the party has asked for people who want to volunteer to be trained as party agents. Kindly make sure that you send your best people. What I said was that preferably, if we can find them, we want people with a tertiary education. I didn't say we are recruiting only people with a tertiary education. I said, preferably, we want people with a tertiary education. But there are people who probably are in SHS who are bright and can be trained to be electoral agents. I haven't said we should refuse them. What I'm saying is that the election today is more complicated than it was in the past. In the past, we needed people to sit there to prevent imposters. Now the issue of the posters is resolved by the biometric verification machine. But you must have somebody who can understand that the number of the biometric verification machine must be the same as the number of ballots in the box. And when you're filling the they are filling the page sheets, you must see it's like algebra. C uh, C uh, uh, five plus A four plus three must be equal to this. If you don't have the know-how, there's no way you're going to understand when those figures are put on the page sheets. And that's why I'm saying, preferably, we can find people with a tertiary education, or people who don't have a tertiary education but have the uh, uh, cognitive sense to be able to decipher the page sheets and be able to train as proper polling agents. Let's find those people. So all of you who are accountants, all of you who are architects, all of you who are professionals, let us know the polling station where you vote, so that on that day you are not just going to vote and go away. You will vote and sit there on behalf of NBC and make sure that the right thing is done. Because I believe that the this election is transparent and fair, I have no doubt in my mind that NBC will win it. And so finally, you have the, the, the medal. 
is known across the length and breadth of this country. Everybody knows the kind of person he is. He's not only good in the career that he has chosen for himself, but he does a lot of other things. Even without being the MP, if you see some of the things that he's done in this constituency, it is commendable. He's a farmer, and I've been. He's my fellow farmer. And I know that he cares about the young people of this constituency. And so I present him to you, I put him in your hands, and it's you that make him the member of my I know that when his wife brings, even not being a member of parliament, if you add the mantle of parliamentary leadership to him, he will make sure that this constituency becomes a model constituency for the rest of the world. Thank you very much. We can have a great time. We can have a great time. She elected the Wasu West for Gogo, but I didn't want the constituency there. You said you were rationalizing taxes. You can't rationalize this enough to rationalize taxes. All the promises you are making, you have enough time to start implementing them right now. I said, no, go for me first, and then I'll come and do it. Who are they living in 2016? They can't do it here. They say you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time. Those false promises are not going to work. If you have anything to do for the next, you have enough time to do it now. You have five months. If you can't do it in five months, there is no guarantee that you can do it in four years or eight years. And there are time to time off to debunk that useless thing about four years and eight years. If you follow the logic of party stays go. He has only four years, after eight years. Then it means no president should get a second term. The man says, if you get a second term and you have only four years, you will be accountable to the people. So then we should change the constitution and say, every president should be one term and go away. Because in a second term, you will be accountable. Even though you see there's no logic in what the president says, it means when you say four more, four more, you knew that Nana was going to be an accountable. And so let's dismiss that and let's look forward. We have solutions for the problem and we have the experience to implement those solutions to rescue this country from the crisis of the When Ghana has reached, we need a steady, experienced hand to turn our fortunes around. If you have two buses and you have a driver's space, who has been an apprentice to a driver sitting in one of those buses? A young experienced driver who has driven you several times back and forth to your destination and back. Which of those two buses will you sit And so, the person himself says he's a driver's friend. He doesn't have a license yet. So, he should want to get a license yet. And then, after he gets a license, he can come to the car. two important programs that I've talked about here. And one is because of the high unemployment in this particular constituency. The first one is the apprenticeship program. Because if young people have finished school and they don't have a job yet, then they should be acquiring a skill so that they can go into the world of work. And that's why we're talking about the National Apprenticeship Program. For the young people who have finished JHS and SHS, and have not advanced into uh, tertiary education, they need to get a skill to go into the world of work. A skill is always important for any person. Because 
whether you continue to stay in your uh, home constituency or you move to any part of the country or you even go outside the country if you have a skill your chance of getting a job is higher there are many people who want to jack up but if you are jack up, you jack up with a skill then i think most of you have heard about jack up jack up with a skill because if you jack up and you are capital you get a job to do if you are Japan and you are missing, you get a job to do. If you are Japan and you are welder, you get a job to do. So acquire the skill so that you can get employment in your own country. But if it happens that you find yourself outside this country, that skill will help you to get a job. And that's why I hope you do so much the National Apprenticeship Program. I hope that all those who are not in education, not in employment, will take advantage of it and at least get training in a skill. And so whatever you want to do, we will make sure that the master craftsmen are paid to give you that training free of time. And the next critical issue is the issue of small and medium enterprises, which are run particularly by our women. Our women are in trade, in commerce, and so on and so forth. And most of the time, some of what they need as capital for their businesses is as little as a thousand Ghana cities. And yet, they have no access to that credit. We had the Women's World Bank. And when this government decided to do the banking sector cleanup, they added this important bank into the sector cleanup and shut it down. So now there's no specialized institution giving credit to women in this country. And that's why we say when we come back into office, we're going to establish the National Women's Bank. And we focus on giving small credits to women in small and medium enterprises. Women are an important part of our economic prosperity. If you go into several sectors, it is the women who are driving progress in those sectors. And so if we put our money where our mouth is, with our mothers and our sisters and our wives, so that they are able to earn an income, it will improve the welfare of our children and our husbands and our brothers and, 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 and our kids. And so it's one of the issues that will take up. The 24 hour economy, I've explained it so many times. It is only those who don't want to understand who don't understand. Otherwise, if you say, oh, but some people are doing it already, we want everybody to do it. And so the point is, some people are doing it already, but they are doing it for no training. Because the owners of the employment believe that they can optimize their profits by adding more shares. So they are doing it voluntarily. There is no policy. And I'm saying that NDC is coming to introduce a policy that will incentivize more people to add on additional shares, to create more employment for young people. What is difficult to understand about this? And so let's uh, work hard to gain victory for NDC. The point is, the best signal we can send to the world that Ghana is ready for a turnaround is to vote out the MPP. Yes. Then we'll be taken seriously that we want to do a turnaround. A vote for the MPP candidates in this 2024 election is a vote for a third term for Nana Akufa. Why we are desperate to break the eight is to do a cover up of the eight years of atrocities that they have uh, uh, inflicted on Ghanaians. And so they need a pliant vice president to come and inherit them so that all the loot, all the corruption, all the stealing will be covered up. And it won't happen. The good people of Ghana will be And so when we come, we're going to hold them to account. I know that our chiefs have been complaining about their lands that have been appropriated. And I've said that when we come, we'll set up a commission of a